Hey, what's up guys? So today we're going to do something a little bit different. And this uh, video we're going to talk about, and this will be the first in probably a three-part series. Uh, we'll see how many parts I put into it, but it's going to be talking about how to be a student and actually going to go through uh, the progression of me taking a class. Now, uh, if you didn't know, I have two goals in life. One is to have fun, just always trying to have fun. And two is to learn something, right? Always learning something new. And so that, that leads me into going to classes pretty often. If you didn't know, I, I take about 12 to 18 classes a year. This year's been a little bit different due to the COVID, but it is what it is, right? I took a lot of online classes because I can. Now, being that I'm a, an avid student and I'm always trying to learn more, I've tried to perfect my way of being a student, right? And, and the things that I need to do to be a better student every single time. And that's not to like bring an apple to the teacher kind of thing. That's how do I learn as much as possible in every class that I take and soak in all the information possible. Now, I have an article out there that is uh, in the UN12 magazine as well as on my blog called Shooter Maturity. And in that, that article, I explain your shooter maturity level and what it correlates to. And if you don't know what that is, go to my blog and read that article. It's actually pretty interesting for most of you. I've gotten a lot of good feedback from it, so I hope it's something helpful. But what it encompasses or what, what we start to learn as human beings, going to classes is going to introduce different stressors. Now, a lot of people are nervous about taking classes because they don't want to be the worst student. They are, they're scared that they're going to, you know, hold up the class in some form or fashion or that the, there's going to be a bunch of dudes there that are just so good and they, they make them feel like shit or, or whatever their, their reasoning for not taking a class. A lot of times it's ego oriented. So if your ego gets in your way, man, you're, you're only, you're only hurting yourself. Nobody else cares. So when it, when it comes down to it, uh, when I like to go to classes, it's, it's to progress myself uh, as a shooter, as, as uh, anything really. But the majority of classes that I take aren't shooting oriented, right? Some are medical, some are actually like QuickBooks, like <laughs> online courses on how to use software, stuff like that. Um, even, even going out and taking like a painting course because I've never been a painter, but I really like art. So learning to paint and getting into different classes, guys, is, is or learning anything new is always going to be something that you can take small snippets of and maybe correlate it to something else that you're interested in. So it, it's very, it behooves you to be a student. Now, um, like I was saying, I want to go and take you guys through a little uh, series of me taking a class. Now, I, I didn't want to go and take a regular pistol or rifle class and do this because one, those classes are like easy, right? Like those classes are um, something that I'm, I'm already good at, right? To an extent. Not that I can't get better. I can always get better and I'm always striving for better, but I'm comfortable in that area, right? I'm comfortable with pistol, rifle, even mid-range to, to uh, uh, short-range carbine stuff. Like I'm very comfortable in that arena because I enjoy that. I do that on a regular basis. I teach that. Uh, even night vision, right? I'm comfortable in that arena. So it's very easy for me to go to the, one of those classes with a high confidence level and, and succeed. But what if I did something that I'm not comfortable with yet, right? Like precision shooting. So precision shooting or long distance shooting, I'm not comfy with, right? I'm still a student, very, very much novice students and want to learn more. So decided on, and, and in this last year, I've, I've really tried to pick up certain things, go to different classes here and there, and start to learn the craft, um, as well as go from long distance rifle with an AR style rifle, which once again, I'm very comfortable with, to a bolt action rifle, which I am not comfortable with. Um, if you guys don't know, I was never a sniper. That wasn't my job. Hung out with snipers, but never, never was one of those. So it's very outside my comfort zone when it comes to shooting precision stuff. And what that brings me to is, hey, what if I take a class uh, or a class of some sort that's precision oriented and take you guys through my little journey? So wanted to do something like that. Now, 
Um, in this episode, we're going to talk about uh, being a good student, the equipment that I'm going to bring and stuff like that. And then the last thing is um, the actual uh, note-taking process that I use in classes. Now, a lot of people don't take notes, and, uh, and we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a few. So going into it, let's talk about being a good student and how to go about going into a process of taking a class. Now, as a student, you want to have the right mindset, right? A lot of guys don't take classes because they have ego. But if you're already looking at taking classes, you're probably trying to progress yourself. So you're, you're putting some stuff aside, which is good. That, is that, that bravado and ego stuff uh, really does hurt a lot of people and uh, either makes them not learn much in a class because they know things or they just don't go to classes because they know things or they've been doing this for so long. So you, you guys don't get yourself stuck in that rut. Uh, it's a constant thing. You look at any professional out there, they're continuously learning new things, um, most of them at least. Now, mindset-wise, when you're getting into this, there's a couple different things you want to make sure. Uh, one, physical, right? Physically ready for it is going to be a big one, right? And I consider that part of your mindset because, yeah, you can, you can be physically fit, but do you have the endurance? Or maybe you don't have the endurance, but you can lift heavy shit. Right? You want to know what class you're taking and what's going to correlate towards what you can physically do. And not only that, but physically going out and doing it. That's the hard part for most people. They're like, oh, I'll take a class one day and I hear it all the time or I get an email or I get a Insta Instagram message or uh, a PM on Facebook and they're like, man, can't wait until I can take a class with you. I'm like, why haven't you just gone out and done it? Now, I understand there's a financial thing too and maybe it's a, a distance thing too that goes along with financial when it comes to traveling but if you really want it go out and get it everybody does everything they want in life right it's prioritizing really it's not a, a matter of means it's mainly a matter of prioritizing so going into more mindset stuff right mentally are you mentally prepared to go to a class and and be challenged and not only that but maybe struggle a little bit and have to ask for help, which is something that a lot of people don't try to do. Um, I encourage it in my classes for people to ask questions. I ask if there's any questions constantly, and most people say no, and then right after we break to go do the thing or apply the skill or go back and get ammo or whatever it is, people have questions. It's like, just ask them with the group. There's probably other people that want to know too. And a lot of those times, the group may have wanted to know, so I go back and I repeat myself to everybody else because it's a good question. So don't be afraid of asking questions in that and don't let your mindset or at least your ego get in the way of asking questions, guys. It is so imperative that you try new things and if you don't know, you just don't know. So ask, it's, it's that simple. Emotionally, right? So emotionally, are you prepared to take a class? And that's something else to kind of uh, look into. Are you somebody who is uh, emotionally not ready because your mind is in other places, right? You have problems at home, you know, the, you have, you have uh, issues with work, you have issues with like your own personal life. Maybe you're not ready to take a class because you're not gonna soak in the information that you need. Make sure that you're ready for that. Emotionally prepared to like clear your head and be in the now and actually uh, participate in the course versus be somebody that's just a bystander there. Um, I, I see it all the time, the, the La La Land student, right? And it's something I reference in my, my uh, article on shooter maturity. Um, but the La La Land student is not there. They're physically there. They're probably staring at you, but they're not there, right? Like mentally, they're not in the game. They're not in the zone. They're not trying to learn because they're, they're busy, right? Like they're busy in their head thinking about all the other things in the world. If you're gonna go, make sure you're emotionally available to learn, right? Now that seems weird, but it's something that a lot of people don't take into account when they go to take a class. Now, the, the next thing we're gonna talk about, guys, uh, with this little series or this little episode here is equipment that I'm gonna take to this class, what class I'm taking, and also like a little bit about my expectations on the class. So um, what class am I taking is a precision rifle course uh, and it's a 101 course from Modern Day Sniper. And 
this class should be a blast, right? Uh, I've vetted my instructors, right? Uh, Kaylin and Phil both are very well uh, rounded, very well and, and knowledgeable guys about their, their craft, right? In long range shooting. Both of them are former Marine Corps snipers or scout snipers, sorry. But they both have this, this competitive side to them that, that reminds me of myself, right? Blending the tactical or defensive and the performance slash competitive side of the world into one. And that's what a lot of my classes tend to be like. And it, it immediately grabbed me. I was like, I was, I was taken back by it because I, I love seeing that kind of style and to see it in something that I haven't done before really uh, took me in, right? And, and, and captured me. So I started watching podcasts. I started looking them up. I started watching how they they deal and they talk to things or talk about things. I started getting into a little bit of uh, like uh, any kind of uh, literature that I could see that they were putting out or knowledge they were putting out because anything, any class that I take, I try to really vet the instructor if I have the chance to. And looking at Kalen, um, and and this is nothing against Kalen or Frank Proctor, but they both remind me of each other, right? In a different realm. So Frank Proctor being one of my mentors, if you guys didn't know, and I grew up learning with him, shooting with him, and then eventually competing with him and teaching for him. Um, and we're still friends today where I take a class from him every year, uh, or at least two. <laughs> and Frank, is he's been one of my mentors in shooting. Um, Kalen reminds me of that same style chilled, laid back, very technical, very conscious of the mind, body, and the gun being oriented in the same ways. Uh, very, very, very much the same. So that captured me as well and made me want to take another class from them. So uh, modern day sniper that this class is going to be very, very fun for me. Uh, I, or at least I expect it to be. Now, something so you guys know too, even as a seasoned shooter and somebody who shoots quite often and I'm going to a class, this is gonna be something uh, that is different for me, right? Bolt action stuff is something I'm still learning, so it's it's new, it's fresh, it's scary to an extent, it's exciting, I'm nervous, but I'm also very much uh, wanting to learn more, right? I, I wanna be that sponge. So another reason why I'm showing you guys this whole entire series. Now, something else uh, that goes along with that is, where's this class and what am I taking to the class? So the class is actually in Washington State in Yakima. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. But it's in all, all the way in Washington State. I live in Florida, so this is gonna be a long flight for me uh, and also a traveling class for me. So it's not only very uh, exciting, but it's expensive, right? It's, it's nowhere near just going down the street to the range and uh, taking a class there where it's very low cost. It's, uh, I've got airfare, I've got the class fee, I've got ammo, I've got rental car, I've got hotel, but it's all for my own professional and personal development. Now, I don't plan on doing precision courses or teaching precision courses. This is literally just for me to learn and for me to have fun, right? Something different. And what, uh, what I need to bring or what I'm going to be bringing, guys, is pretty simple, right? So first one, or first thing I'm bringing is my Tika, right? My Tika uh, is in 308. It's a 16 inch. Uh, my Thunder Beast can. You can see more on this, and I'll put a link below for the video on my Tika. But this is what I'm bringing to class, and uh, we shall see how it performs at more distance. I'm I'm sure I'll be struggling with some stuff uh, later or further on in the distance side, but I'm excited to play with it and see what happens. The next thing I'm bringing is going to be the ammunition for that bad boy. So uh, I'm going to be using Hornady ELD Match, uh, and it's a 168 grain. Um, I think uh, will be good, right? It'll it'll probably perform as well as I needed to. I'm sure a heavier bullet would have been nicer, but I couldn't get my hands on any. So I'm dealing with what I got. So taking that for ammo. Then I'm also taking my tripod. Right? It's part of the, the uh, necessi necessities. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Go ahead and utilize my tripod that I've used quite a bit. So I'm comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with the way it works and functions with its pig saddle. Um, I also have it so that I can direct mount it to 
my Arca rail, and so that's that's another option I have. Something else I'm bringing, which is probably really smart to bring, is my rear bag. This is an uh, Armageddon pint size game changer, um, and this is the waxy one, so it's kind of nice. Uh, it's got a light fill, so nothing super heavy, uh, mainly for packing because I got to travel with it, so added weight, added monies. Um, but this is a really good rear bag as well as for obstacles or putting it on top of stuff to lay my gun on. Uh, pretty awesome bag, so this is what I'm taking for that. Then I'm taking Ear Pro, right? Some Ear Pro electronic because in a class guys if you take a class electronic hearing protection is pretty smart because then you could hear everything as well as you could do everything and keep your ears protected i'm also taking a little tool kit right with torque wrenches because precision stuff i'll be taking my uh range finder i have just a little vortex range finder nothing fancy but it is a a uh, pretty good range finder it's been pretty accurate uh i am taking a little tri stool or tri leg mini stool that folds up, uh, mainly because I have to travel, so I can't take like a big bag or a big chair or something like that for when we're taking class portions. Uh, so instead of sitting on the ground, it at least gets me off the ground a little bit. I'm also taking a cleaning kit for my rifle because that's important. Make sure you have a cleaning kit, spare parts, things like that that you would need for the gun that you're gonna be using. I'm also taking my uh, data book as well as a data sleeve or a, uh, a quarterback sleeve for data, right? So I can have my dope on there. I'm also taking my uh, spotting scope that I can attach to my, uh, my tripod when I'm not using it, as well as to try and attach my uh, phone or GoPro to so that I can capture some video for you guys when it comes to uh, shooting further out so you guys can actually see the target and I can blend the images together. So that's something else. So uh, as well as all that, uh, for uh, data collection or for my dope, I will be collecting it on my phone using the Ford Off uh, Hornady app, which is fantastic. I've been using it for about a year. Um, it's actually the one that Kalen uh, uh, tells people to use because it's pretty damn good. He recommends it but I've been using it before I knew or knew of Kalen, so this is pretty awesome that it kind of meshed or worked out. Um, last thing that we're gonna talk about, guys, and, and that's just the gear stuff that I'm bringing. Um, uh, with that, uh, I'll also have my pack, right? And my pack is gonna be what holds the majority of the stuff, whether it's gonna be lashed on the outside or stuffed inside, um, obviously like water, clothing, rain gear, Stuff like that that I normally take out when I tra travel is gonna obviously come with. Now, that being said, I'm gonna take my notebook as well. Now my notebook, if you can see these little yellow tabs, each of those is from a class that I have taken. Um, every year I get a new notebook and every year I fill up this notebook with more notes based off of the classes I took. Um, and a lot of people don't take notes in class. I think that's a really big, um, I guess that that's a downside or a, a, a downfall for you if you're not it is very important to be taking notes uh, not only because you're paying for the information you might as well retain some of it but because with those notes and you putting them into into actual word and writing it down it gives you a another way of memorizing what you're learning so or, or learning in, in general so not only are you hearing it seeing it but now you're feeling it and then you're shooting it like you're you're learning in so many different methods versus just hearing and seeing which a lot of people do learn with but uh don't retain well with writing it down is going to help you retain that now what i'm going to do is i'll also show you guys like a a uh, close-up of this notebook so you guys can see kind of like the outline of what i use to um to actually take notes. So, uh, and, and I'll superimpose that on top of the screen as well. So when I when I take notes uh, at the top, it's usually the class that I'm taking. Um, then right under that is the day of that class, right? So I could put the date or I could put day one, something like that. I'll probably usually put the date just because I can tell between those dates, which one's day one, which one's day two stuff. 
Um, this is a four day class, so I'm excited about taking it and having a ton of notes. Uh, also put down the concept, right? So the concept of what information is being given, whatever that information or whatever that's supposed to be uh, conceptually learned at that point. Um, and then I'll describe any of the drills or information that's going on. So, uh, so any like uh, any specifics to that drill, how the drills run, how to practice that drill, stuff like that. And I'll put that in there as well. And also put any tips or specifics that the instructor puts out about that exact uh, drill or uh, concept that they were teaching. I'll also draw if it's if it's something I can draw. I'll draw out the drill with lines and arrows and kind of showing what what is exactly um, needed or known or wanted. And then I'll also put down the time of of when I do that drill so that I can I can annotate it that that's the time that I had somebody like film me doing the drill so then I have a visual representation of it as well so uh, I highly recommend doing that if you're gonna take uh, notes and put video together so that's something else to kind of take into the terms um, I also after I do the drill I usually put how I performed it you know any mistakes I made um, what can I do better like to, to better myself in that drill and then any notes from the instructor based off of my performance on that drill and that's how I take notes guys I mean it may take like two or three pages as I go through this to do those kind of things but it's worth the time because afterwards I have the notes I have the visual data and then I also have my experience that went into it and I can learn so much more that way versus the other way around where people just sit there and they're just like this cool and they just nod and that's it where they could be taking notes understanding what's going on maybe recording if the, the instructor's okay with it stuff like that so that's how I take notes guys um, not only is it super important uh, but I want to I want to also state don't don't take notes on your phone uh, I know for me personally, uh, I get a lot of messages, a lot of emails, a lot of shenanigans all day long. And if I take notes on my phone, I'm going to get distracted. I'm going to look at those messages or those those notifications and, and start sifting through there and losing track of what I'm doing. Like the only way that you're going to receive information, guys, is if you're there and you're actively listening to this information. If you're not, then uh, you're going to be missing out on this class that you've probably just paid some money for. And... You're, you're missing out on the information that you could be learning from. So, hope this helps, guys. Uh, but that's just series one of, or episode one of this grand adventure that I'm going to try and take. Hopefully, it'll be like two more episodes, nothing crazy. But uh, but the next one will be at classes and maybe like a, a little after action of the class. Um, and then maybe even an interview with, uh, with Kaylin. So, hope this helps, guys. Uh, and also... I uh, hope this is something cool that you guys may want to uh, enjoy or actually, or enjoy seeing, and maybe I'll do more of these kind of things when I take classes. So, take care.